Yesterday we got the motor pulled and today we're going to start working on the donor motor, get the heads on, and try to get as much done as we can. Got some goodies. Yeah, he went to the junkyard, got us a battery tie down since the aftermarket one on there that was like rubber, it just fell apart. Just yeah, it yanked apart. And then we also got the tensioner right here. This uh all the threads along this were all messed up. I'm gonna use my tap and die kit and rechase these threads and try to make them brand new again and try and clean this up the best we can. Uh this cost me roughly about twelve dollars for miscellaneous parts at local junkyard. And uh if I'm correct, uh, I'm pretty sure any any EJ that has this same tensioner, you know, they're all all universal. So. Yeah, I looked it up on Wikipedia. I googled it, and they all look the same. So. And also, we got some coolant. We got the oil filter, uh, some purple power to clean up stuff, some degreaser, handful of uh, uh, general stuff that's required for an engine that we didn't already order. Yeah. So. And of course, some tacos, because I'm an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're going to grab some parts, pull them inside, and we're going to keep the garage door closed, because it's 10 degrees colder in the garage than it is outside, and it is cold. Don't open it! <laughs> we'll go through the house. <laughs> Alright, so we I just cleaned the valve covers, and they're still a little grotty, but it's going to have to do. We got the oil drained out of the old motor. This new oil drain plug that'll give you five more horsepower. And uh, Mike just explained to me how it works, and I don't remember. But we're about to take the oil pan off because that's one of the few things that we're going to be reusing from this motor. We're going to be reusing the oil pan and the uh, intake manifold. So we're going to crack this uh, oil pan off and we'll pick back up once we're done with that. Alright, we're applying some, uh, I don't know, what are we applying, Mike? Permatex sealant. Some fat beads. Got the sealant on. My Mark. hand's cramping up. Mike's got a hand cramp. <sighs> don't drop that shit. Pray to God you don't drop that shit. Can you tap it to the line to hold it real quick? Yep, there. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Alright, we're gonna get this bolted on. We'll come back when we come to the next step of progression. Okay, now we got the oil pan on, all the bolts are in, gasket, sealer, 
Um, we are now going to torque each one of these bolts to five newton meters. Uh, the lowest my torque wrench goes to is 6.8, so we're going to be stopping a little early before it hits that point. Yeah, 5.2. It's not too shabby. Is there any specific pattern? I like to go back and forth just because have it. Same as like, you know, once once you do the head gaskets and you learn that sequence, it's hard to uh hard to do anything <laughs> just like out of sequence right once you learn a sequence all right we figured we'd let you guys know the torque specs so that way you don't have to look it up and google it we got the uh what is that is that like a mechanic shop uh, shop manual guide yep Man manufacturer repair procedure manufacturer repair procedure kind of like a Haynes manual maybe uh if you have a Haynes manual it probably tell you the torque yeah yeah all right so those are the torque specs we'll kind of be along this build we'll uh we'll be going over the torque specs and stuff like that on some of i guess everything mostly important stuff yeah as we're getting back towards the installation looks good so this is the redesigned head gasket it's three ply instead of made of paper and sorrow <laughs> it's two ply <laughs> uh so these will definitely hold up a lot better than the uh the oem head gaskets it's supposed to be we're not going with arp head studs we're using oem stretch bolts which mm. is completely fine because this is going to be just a na daily driver <laughs> just cut head yeah we are finally putting head gaskets on this motor get your lips serviced today yeah if you own an older Subaru you should definitely get this done every hundred thousand miles I'm confused at why these are going there these are like right here like this Gasket. Why is it hitting head gasket? Doing work. So we're just lowering the head studs down. Got to do it with some style. Ooh. So buttery smooth. It's smooth. <laughs> and then once they get uh, down to where they're practically ready to be torqued, we're going to go ahead and. Uh, do the torque procedure. But they go one through six. One, two, three, four, six. <laughs> what is you doing, baby? What is you doing? <laughs> okay, we're going to be doing the torque sequence on tightening heads on an EJ251. Okay, so. First off, we went ahead and bottomed out all the uh, head bolts. Um, we even labeled them in the, their numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and that's the order for tightening sequence. <clears throat> so step one is torque them all to 20. So we're going to go ahead and do that. 20 foot pounds. Not Newton meters, not Agadugas. God forbid you do 20 Agadugas. Get yourself a good torque wrench. And good torque wrench out. And as you do this, you can kind of hear the gasket seating itself. So, and these are stretch bolts. I'll say it again. A little bit louder for the people in the back. Stretch bolts! So, number three. Number four. Number 
five. Oopsies. Oh no. <laughs> we can blame Mike on this one. Yep, my fault. <laughs> um, and number six, the last one. Our next step is going to be 51 foot pounds. There's no backing them out? Nope, not yet. Step two is 51 foot-pounds, and that's also going to be in the same sequence. So our third step now is to loosen all of them 180 degrees twice. So we're going to go to So now we're loosening them all 180 degrees. So what some people will do is they'll treat the head bolt as a clock so that way if their red line starts at the top of their bolt like a sundial or at 12 o'clock they want to be at six hmm. so they do that um, with this torque wrench we can just do 180 and it'll tell us when we're there he got the bougie wrench so One eighty. One eighty. One eighty. That's not happy with you. <laughs> One eighty. measuring doesn't really work too much. It's a good thing I'm going off uh, the geometry of this garage. <laughs> and 180. Alright, so we back them out 180 each. Now what are we doing? Mm -hmm. um, after we back them all out 180 each, step four is to loosen them again. 180 degrees. Another 180 degrees. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that we've loosened them 180 degrees twice, we are now going to torque bolt one and two down to 25 foot pounds. So we're going to switch back to foot pounds and we're going to do 25, just one and two. So. One, and two is going to be twenty five. There we go. And then it says three, four, five, and six are going to be torqued to eleven. So 
is going to go down to 11 foot pounds. This is way different than the ARPs. However, my torque wrench stops at 15, so it says I'm going to go 3 at 11 foot pounds. Right there, four, eleven foot pounds, five, eleven foot pounds, and six. Now we are going to tighten 80 to 90 degrees. We're just going to go flat out and set it to 90 degrees. It'll be easier. And also we're going to go with orientation of the garage to help. So we're going to be starting at the garage door and an angle to the car. Or vertical of the motor. So, and this goes for all of them in the same sequence, of course. So, number one, 90, number two, 90, three, yeah, I'll go like this so you guys can see me better. Three, four, five. This is where your leverage comes into play. <laughs> five, and then six. Okay. And our last step, tighten by 90 degrees again. This is the tough one right here. This is that 90. It really tries to kick you in the butt. I wish the stand had locking legs My or locking knows. wheels. <laughs> My other one does. Not here, unfortunately. That's it for the torque sequence, folks. That's uh, that's uh, our lovely cylinder two and cylinder four head. Yeah. So we're gonna do the other one and not film it because now you know how to do it. And it's the same for both. Okay, quick update. We got the heads on and the valve covers. And what do you got there, Jones? This is a coolant crossover pipe that we are also going to reuse from the old engine okay and then after this i think we're gonna do the water pump thermostat. and the thermostat and then i think we're gonna call it for a night after that <laughs> so when we get done with that we might film it we might not it's getting kind of late and it is cold as tits so we might film doing the uh good old thermostat boy and the water pump and we might not we might just bang it out and all right guys that's gonna be it for this video we, we just got done with the timing belt i couldn't film any of it it was just it was tough